This is a block of salt. Why, you might be asking yourself, why does he have a block of salt? Well, I'll tell you. In section one, we learned about sand aquifers, and now I want to tell you about a different kind of aquifer, karst aquifers. There are kinds of rock that are soluble. That is, they dissolve like salt. Obviously, I'm not talking about sand, like in our sandstone aquifer. Sand is one of the ingredients in glass, which is pretty insoluble. So I'm not talking about sand. I'm talking about limestone. It is made from seashells that build up on the ocean floor. The shells are squished into rock. We call that rock limestone because it has much lime from the shells in it. Limestone is the matrix of karst aquifers. A karst aquifer is an aquifer that is in limestone. Limestone just happens to be the rock here in San Antonio, so it means that we have a karst aquifer. Our karst aquifer is called the Edwards Aquifer, and it is important that we learn about it. Previously, we learned about sand aquifers with a tank of sand, and now we're going to learn about limestone aquifers. The key to karst is dissolution, so let's start by learning what dissolution is. Dissolution is essentially when tiny molecules of a solid go into a liquid. Now, I'm going to make something dissolve. I'm going to make a solid go into a liquid. Watch. When I pour salt into a glass of water, well, what happens? What happens when I pour the solid salt into the liquid water? Well, the salt, the salt disappears. Disappears? Well, we know things don't just disappear. The salt has dissolved. The solid salt is soluble in the liquid water and it dissolves. How do I know that the salt dissolved into the water? Yep, tastes like salt. Limestone also dissolves, but a bit differently and more slowly. But like salt, it also goes into a liquid. To understand limestone dissolution a bit better, we're going to move to my next model. We're back to my salt block. For this demonstration, I'm going to pour some water onto the salt block. We just established that salt is very soluble. So as I pour the water onto it, we know that a bit of the salt is now in the water that is running off. Now watch what happens to this salt block over time as water is dribbled onto it. I let water drip onto these blocks. The first one had water dripping on it for a day, and look what happened to it. The second one had water dripping onto it for a week. And the third one had water dripping onto it for a month. We can see that over time, the water dissolved the salt blocks and made them smaller and smaller. So dissolution can be looked at as the removal of soluble materials. And removing solids and karst makes passages for water to travel through. Now we know what dissolution is and how it works. Limestone dissolves, but not quite like salt. Limestone is dissolved by a naturally occurring acid, carbonic acid. Carbonic acid isn't like acid rain, which is man-made. Carbonic acid occurs naturally in the atmosphere. Now basically, when the rainwater hits the ground, it is ever so slightly acidic, just a teensy bit. This is a piece of limestone, and this is a small dropper of an acid. Now watch. The acid is reacting with the limestone and dissolving it, just a bit of it. The solid limestone is dissolving into the liquid acid. Can you hear it? If I keep dripping the acid on the rock, it would dissolve a little hole in the rock. Eventually, the rock would get smaller and smaller, just like our salt blocks did. Limestone is soluble, just like we saw, but we say that limestone has a lower solubility than salt. Salt dissolves easily, and limestone dissolves with more difficulty. Every day around San Antonio, we see evidence that water has dissolved away limestone. You might ask yourself now, how do we know that water dissolves limestone? You can't see dissolved salt when it's in the water, so how can we see dissolved limestone? Well, when the limestone comes out of solution, the reverse of dissolution happens, which we call precipitation. This is how cave formations are made. These cave formations were formed by water that had dissolved limestone in it. The limestone precipitated, that is, it came out of the water. It went back from a liquid to a solid. Very large amounts of cave formations can be made from precipitation. Can you think of times when you've seen cave formations? Stalactites, stalagmites, and flowstone are all formed by precipitation. But precipitation doesn't only take place in caves. Water with dissolved limestone flows in lots of places. 
Would you believe that we see evidence of karst activity in our homes? It even comes out of the faucet in your house. Check this out. This is a faucet that got clogged up by precipitating limestone. Precipitation can happen anywhere water has limestone in it, even on faucets and shower heads. Next time you take in a shower, take time to look up into the shower head. Chances are you'll see a white deposit, which is dissolved limestone that has been precipitated in the same manner that cave formations are made. All of these things, caves, stalagmites, and clogged faucets are evidence that we have a karst aquifer. And if you think about it, there are lots of caves around San Antonio, aren't there? There's Cascade Caverns, Cave Without a Name, Interspace Caverns, Natural Bridge Caverns, Wonder Cave, and probably some more too. In fact, Central Texas has over a thousand caves. Now think about the coast. Think about the times when you've been to Dallas, to Houston, and other places around Texas. There aren't any caves around Dallas or Houston, are there? And that's because they don't have karst aquifers. But San Antonio and Austin do, and so we have caves. And now, we're going to learn more about these caves. Let's talk a bit more about carbonic acid. This naturally occurring acid that dissolves limestone is in rainwater. It isn't as strong as the acid I used a minute ago, but you get the point. The acid dissolves limestone in the same way that water dissolves our salt. What we see is that the acidic rainwater falls and enters the ground. It enters our aquifers. As it travels through the limestone, it dissolves the rock. This rock is from our karst aquifer, the Edwards Aquifer. At one point it was solid, like this rock, but the acidic water dissolved out all these little holes. As we speak, at this very moment in fact, water under our feet is dissolving rock. It is making more rocks just like this. And this is what karst rock looks like underground. These holes are formed by the continual dissolution of the limestone bedrock by acidic rainwater. Compared to the sand aquifer we made, how fast do you think water can travel through this rock? Pretty fast, huh? How do we know that dissolution is going on underground? Well, we have a number of karst features exposed in the surface that we can learn from. A karst feature is any landform formed from dissolution. Around San Antonio, there are a number of karst features, including sinkholes, fractures, springs, and caves. Water flows down through karst aquifers and into the aquifer below. We said that in sand aquifers, the water had to infiltrate slowly through and around all the sand of the matrix. It moves snake-like, right? In karst, however, the karst features act like channels. Take a look at these karst features. Water flows very fast into the ground through them. They allow the water to enter the aquifer quickly. How fast can water move through these karst features? Very fast. Water flowing through karst features moves so much faster than water infiltrating down into sand. And with thousands of thousands of karst features to focus the water, the Edwards Aquifer recharges quickly. Recharge is when water infiltrates down and replenishes the aquifer. Part of the reason that the Edwards Aquifer can produce so much water for San Antonio is because it recharges so quickly through these karst features. You might be asking yourself right now, well, so the aquifer has all this water recharging into it and moving through it. Does water flow underground like a river? Well, some groundwater does flow like a river, but only a tiny, tiny bit of it. Let's think back. We said that a sponge makes a good aquifer model. This sponge has holes in it, just like our karst rock did. Does water move through it like a river? No. Now, I want to do something different. I want to follow a single drop of water through the entire Edwards Aquifer from start to finish. This is a map of the Edwards Aquifer. Here is San Antonio. When it rains over to the west, around Uvalde, and up in the hill country, water with small amounts of carbonic acid hits the soil and it infiltrates into the ground. It trickles down until it pools up at the water table. Remember our fish tank aquifer that we made? It is much like that, only much, much bigger. The water travels underground through paths in the rock, which we call conduits. A conduit is like a natural pipe in the rock. There are tens of thousands of conduits within the aquifer that move water. And like rivers that flow together, conduits flow together. When two conduits flow together, a larger conduit is formed. And when two larger conduits flow together, an even bigger conduit is formed. And when two of these converge, you get the picture. The conduits feed into each other. And so we have all this water moving through these pipes. Sometimes conduits get large enough for you and I to fit into. This is how caves are formed. 
Every cave was once a small conduit that water flowed in. Eventually, that conduit got big enough for us to fit into, and we call it a cave. Water travels from the west part of the aquifer to the east. It flows downhill to the large springs in San Marcos and New Braunfels. In fact, Central Texas has some of the largest springs in the entire state. That should tell you that the Edwards Aquifer moves a lot of water. Additionally, look how big our aquifer is. It's huge. Most aquifers are not nearly this big. Our aquifer stretches from Uvalde in the west to San Marcos in the east and way up into Austin. That's immense. What have we learned from this section? Well, we've learned that there's a very special type of aquifer called a karst aquifer. San Antonio has a very large karst aquifer called the Edwards Aquifer that gets its water from the Texas Hill Country. And we San Antonians get our drinking water from it. We know that rainwater naturally contains carbonic acid. When it infiltrates into the ground and enters the aquifer, it starts dissolving limestone, creating holes, conduits, and caves in the rock. And it flows downhill in the rock, just like water in a river flows, but more slowly. And the aquifer naturally drains out one of the many springs in central Texas. When the water table is high, the springs flow and the aquifer is healthy. But when too many of us consume too much water by watering our lawns in droughts or taking too long of showers, the water table drops. In severe water table drops, springs stop flowing. This makes the very unique communities of fish, frogs, salamanders, and plants that rely on the spring water suffer because they don't receive enough water to live. And it means that there's less fresh water in the aquifer for us to drink.